in the back seat of the car. She was hoping to have a family, be married to her best friend with no regrets. She has loving parents and older sister who cares a lot. She has a big encouraging family, of which she'll need at this time. Eight forty three is not cresting the hill. In a moment they're gonna arrive and give a short report to the other units on their way as to what they find when they arrive. The officer on the ACAR is gonna become an incident commander. His job is gonna be to ensure the safety of his firefighters as well as prevent any further injuries to the victims during the rescue efforts. He must also assign tasks and make sure they're completed in an organized and timely fashion. The first item they're going to have is triage. They need to find out how many victims they have and the extent of the injuries, then prioritize them from most injured to least injured. They'll begin treating the critically injured victims first. having seven patients. One is dead, one is critically injured, three are non-critical patients, and one has minor injuries. Because of the extent and number of the injuries, the incident commander is requesting additional resources. When we deal with trauma, we often refer to the golden hour. This begins at the time of the crash and ends when the patient reaches the operating table of the hospital. If we go beyond that time frame, the patient's chances of dying are much, much greater. In this wreck, 911 was called three minutes after the crash. The first, the first department rig took five minutes to get there. At this time, we are 15 minutes into this incident. The firefighters realize this and know that time is of the essence. Because of the great amount of damage to the vehicles, firefighters are going to have to extricate them out of the vehicles, cutting the cars apart around them. Windshields and doors removed, roofs removed, whatever they have to do to take the car apart around them. our transport time of the most critically injured, the incident commander has requested a helicopter. We look above and see the airlift northwest flying right.
Travel on the ground from here to Harborview can take 20 to 30 minutes, maybe longer depending on traffic volumes. Airlift can arrive, load the patient, and be to Harborview in less than 10 minutes. They're now landing on the football field at Bothell High School, preparing for the packaging of the talk about these victims. Incidentally, all of seven of these victims are students here at Bothell High School. They just spent the last four years together. In fact, a few hours ago, they were sitting around talking about how great life is going to be after high school, which is two weeks from tonight. Sadly, Thea, the young lady lying across the head, isn't going to be at graduation. The two victims in the van were not wearing their seatbelts. They were traveling 35 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour zone. Four victims in the other car were wearing their seatbelts and were traveling 70 miles an hour in a 40 zone. That's an impact that equates to hitting a concrete wall at 100 miles an hour. The drunk driver hit this car so hard the young lady was ejected through the windshield, receiving massive head injuries. The driver hit the steering wheel so hard he bended and fractured multiple ribs, one of which is punctured a lung. Right now he has blood and air leaking into his chest cavity. He has massive head injuries and in his out of consciousness. He too will most likely die very soon. Again, because of the damage to the car, they're going to have to remove the roof to get the rest of the patients out. Victims of the other car received broken legs, arms, cuts, and bruises. Then there's this drunk driver. He received minor injuries, but now he's going to be faced with a plethora of legal and emotional issues that will forever change his life. Now we're going to transition to another test just to see what his balance is like. You'll see he's been raised, he'll have to raise one leg up off the ground, and as often uh, these people can't keep their balance. It's a good indicator of whether or not they're under the influence or how badly they're under the influence. How long do you think it takes to heal from injuries like these? A broken arm, a broken leg, maybe six months to a year with rehab. They may be fully recovered or they may have chronic back pain for the next 40 to 50 years. Then there's the critical patient. If he slips into a coma, he may never wake up. If he does, he may have to learn how to walk again and talk again. You may very well have to learn to do all the things that you and I do every day, all over again. Then there's Thea, the young lady, lying across the hood. That's somebody's daughter, and that's somebody's sister. Think of the loss of that family and her friends must feel. I don't think anyone ever fully recovers from a loss like this. And now you see the driver's been uh, placed under arrest. He will be booked into jail for suspicion of uh, DUI, forever changing his life minimum of $5,000 fine, time in jail, and a permanent record. Then there's the drunk driver. Aside from all the legal issues he's going to have to face, apart from the jail time and manslaughter charges, there's something worse he's going to have to try and live with, his conscience. And the fact that for the rest of his life he'll have to wake up with this night on his mind, that this one night when he chose to drink and then drive, took the life of one of his friends and injured five others. Remember, this isn't only alcohol, but driving under heroin, bath, opiates, marijuana, and the other sources. Friends, if there's one thing you can walk away from with this, this drinking and driving simply isn't worth it. It's not worth the risk and it's not worth the loss of life of a family member, a friend, or even yourself. Have the courage to say, I'm drunk and I'm not going to drive. 
step up and have the courage to look at your best friend and say, you're drunk and you're not going to drive, and take the keys away from them. If they look at you and say, no, I'm not listening to you, come on, come on with me, no big deal, it'll be fine, trust me. Have the courage to say, no, I'm not going with you, I'll find my own way home, and turn and walk away. You see the firefighters packaging them on backboards and seat collars for suspected spine and back injuries. They've been able to remove the roof so they can start getting the patients out. So they'll be loaded up in the medic units and transported to either the local hospitals and the critical patients up to the airlift. I'm sure that every one of your parents would rather receive a phone call from you at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning with you on the line saying, Mom, Dad, sorry I woke you up, but I made a bad choice at a party tonight and I'm drunk. Could you come pick me up and bring me home? Rather than to wake up to a knock at the door and be met by a police officer saying, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry, ma'am, but your child was in a horrible accident earlier this evening, and I need you both to come with me to the scene to identify a body. At this point, the three non-critical patients are being taken by ambulance to nearby hospitals for evaluation. The critically injured patient will be taken to the medic unit where the paramedics will start IVs, splint his legs, and intubate him. They will paralyze him and place a tube down his throat to control his airway and breathe for him. He will be taken to the helicopter and then to Harborview Hospital. As for the young lady on the hood, the medical examiner will be here in about an hour and a half to pick up the body and take her to the morgue. The drunk driver has been arrested and handcuffed. He's been read his rights and is being booked into King County Jail. You see, when somebody drinks and drives, everybody loses. I want to close with this, as all the patients have been extricated and are on their way to hospitals. Remember that you are all a loved one to someone. I'm sure that someone would never want you to end up like this. You all have the rest of your lives ahead of you and so much life to live. Please be responsible. Please don't let a preventable tragedy like drinking and driving take that life away. It's all about choices for you guys. We all have choices to make every day. We choose what to eat for breakfast or who to spend our time with. When you make the choice to abuse a substance at your age, you're breaking the law. You're making the choice to endanger yourself and oftentimes many of those around you. You guys are working so hard to become independent adults. Please don't give up all that you've worked so hard to achieve in one bad decision. You don't know. Maybe this is the second coming and Jesus is just experimenting. <laughs> if you see that the first time, why not try to do it the second time? I went to a party, Mom. I remembered what you said. You told me not to drink, Mom. So I drank soda instead. I felt really proud inside, Mom, the way you said I would. I didn't drink and drive, Mom, even though the others said I should. I know I did the right thing, Mom. I know you're always right. Now that the party is finally ending, Mom, as everyone drives out of sight. As I got into my car, Mom, I knew I'd get home in one because of the way you raised me, Mom. So responsible and sweet. I started to drive away, Mom. 
but I, but as I pulled onto the road, the other car didn't see me, Mom, and it hit me like a load. As I lie here on the pavement, I hear the policeman say, the other guy is drunk, Mom, and now I'm the one who'll pay. I'm lying here dying, Mom. I wish you'd get here soon. How come this happened to me, Mom? My life burst like a balloon. There's blood all around me, Mom. Most of it's mine. I hear the paramedics say, I'll be dead in a short time. I just wanted to tell you, Mom, I swear I didn't drink. It was the other, Mom. The others didn't think. He didn't know where he was going, Mom. He was probably at the same party as I. The only difference is, Mom, he drank, and I will die. Why do people drink, Mom? It can ruin your whole life. I'm feeling sharp pains now, Mom. Pains, just like a knife. The guy who hit me is walking, Mom. I don't think it's fair. I'm lying here dying, Mom. Well, all he can do is stare. Tell my brother not to cry, Mom. Tell Daddy to be brave. And when I get to heaven, Mom, write Daddy's girl on my grave. Someone should have told him, Mom, not to drink and drive. If only they'd have taken the time, Mom, I would still be alive. My breath is getting shorter, Mom. I'm becoming very scared. Please don't cry for me, Mom, because when I needed you, you were always there. I have one last question, Mom, before I say goodbye. I didn't ever drink, Mom, so why am I to die? This is the end, Mom. I wish I could look you in the eye to say these final words, Mom. I love you, and goodbye. about four years off your age. 1985 is my first graduating class. I had a senior sit in my class all year long. He graduated on Saturday. He came to pick up his girlfriend who was a sophomore on Monday after graduation. He and his buddies had been down at Denny Beach doing what teenage boys sometimes do with a case of this. And he picked her up and went back down to Denny Beach but he didn't make the corner on Holmes Point, Holmes Point Drive. Both of them lost their lives. I think of Stacy and I think of Tracy this time of year, every year, every time we do this. They would be more or less 48 years old and 46 years old, about the age of their, your parents. I think of what they missed out on because of the choice that they happened to make. And I don't want any of you put yourselves in that position. I do love my job. I love all of you. Part of what I enjoy about this job comes in June, in that brief moment where there's smile between you and me when I hand you that diploma. That's why I got into this business, to help send you off into the world of life after high school. And I want all of you to be sent off into the world of life after high school. Thank you for your attention this morning. Thank you to Ms. Wands. Thank you to our eight wonderful classmates of yours, the actors. Uh, when you can, please wander back to third period. Some of you may just need to stay here and hug one another a little bit, and I understand why. Thanks, we'll see you all Saturday night. <laughs>